Social Security's delayed retirement credits. Well, here to talk with me about this is Allison Dorosky, who is head of Social Security support at Life Yield. Allison, welcome. Hi, Bob. Thank you. So we're eager to have you hand walk us through a tutorial on what delayed retirement credits are. Great. So one of my favorite topics when it comes to Social Security is actually delayed retirement credits. I find it really fascinating, and I think that it's a really important component when it comes to figuring out somebody's Social Security. So when you're looking at your full retirement age, so that's based off of your date of birth, you will look at, at your FRA. You're entitled to your full primary insurance amount. But what happens if you wait? So if your FRA is 67, what happens if you don't file at 67 and you keep waiting? Well, every month that you delay, the Social Security Administration gives you delayed retirement credits. So for every month that you delay, it's two thirds of 1% of your primary insurance amount. So if your FRA was 67 and you were to delay until age 70, that'd be approximately 24% of delayed retirement credits then added on top of your primary insurance amount at your FRA. So that 24% is guaranteed. You get 8% every year that you delay. And that's so advantageous because there's not a lot of other investment vehicles, especially in retirement, that you can count on a guaranteed 8% increase every single year until you turn 70. In terms of dollar amounts, I think in the article that you wrote for Retirement Daily, you give an example of someone whose benefit PIA might be $1,000 and what this delayed retirement credit might mean in terms of a monthly benefit increase if they wait to age 70, as well as an annual increase in cash flow. Exactly. So that would be about 124% added on top of your benefit amount. So that equates to if you had a benefit of $1,000 at your FRA, when you file at age 70, you would be entitled to approximately $1,240 of a benefit, which means a potential $3,000 extra every year from Social Security. So uh, there are some other things that people need to know, some nuances around filing for um, using delayed retirement credits? Yes. So I find that delayed retirement credits are extremely beneficial for married couples. So if you're planning for what's going to happen when the first spouse passes away, delayed retirement credits are money, literally money. Like they are going to give you that extra bump up because when the first spouse passes away, the surviving spouse gets the higher of the two benefits. So if the husband had delayed until he was 70, he passes away, his wife would be entitled to his benefit at 70, including all of those delayed retirement credits that he earned. Uh, talk a little, too, about the uh, cost of living adjustment and how that affects um, perhaps someone's Social Security benefit if they're taking advantage of DRCs. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding and misconception when it comes to cost of living adjustment. I found that a lot of advisors and clients feel that when they file for Social Security, if they don't delay and they file right away, they're going to get their cost of living adjustment. But if they were to delay, they believe that they're going to lose out on that high COLA like this year that was announced for 2023. It's going to be 8.7 percent. And they feel that they're going to miss out on that. But that's not the case. From the time that you turn 62, which is the age of entitlement with Social Security, until the time that you file, every year that COLA is granted in that time frame, they average that all together, all of those COLAs, and then that gets applied on top of your final benefit amount as a top layer. So if you wait until you're 70, you'll have, with a if you have an FRA of 67, you'll have that 24% of delayed retirement credits, plus you'll have the COLA rolled on top of that. So uh, just a, a point of interest, too, sometimes people think that their delayed retirement credits uh, will increase if they wait until after age 70, but that's not the case. That is not. No, the highest delayed retirement credits will be when you reach 70, and that is when you will max out. There is no benefit in delaying. There is no benefit in delaying other types of benefits either. So if you were to delay filing for survivor benefits or spousal benefits, there is going to be no delayed retirement credits added to that. It's only applicable to retirement benefits. So what if happens if someone has a buyer's regret about not delaying? Right. So you pulled the trigger too early. You filed. You wanted to capitalize on that 8.7% COLA, even though you actually would have been entitled to it if you waited. 
So if you want to go back in and you say, I made a mistake, you have two options. So if you're before your full retirement age, you can submit a request or an application for withdrawal. And what that means is you have within the first 12 months of filing for benefits, but you are required to repay back all of the money that you have received, including any auxiliary benefits. So if you have a spouse receiving on your behalf, on your record, receiving a spousal benefit or a child that's receiving dependent benefits, you would be required to pay back all of those benefits that you received. And it could also have major tax implications depending on the timing. So there's a lot that goes into play when you're rethinking. My suggestion is always, if you want to go back and you say, I can continue working or I can bridge the gap in income by retiring, but delaying filing for social security, if you reach your full retirement age, you can actually suspend your benefits. That does not require you to pay back all of the benefits that you've received. And then when you reach 70, you can refile for your benefits, restart them, and then get all of those delayed retirement credits that were accrued in that time. Right. Now, if you do the latter uh, option of, uh, of, uh, of delaying uh, until 70, after, uh, you're, there's some uh, caveats to, to consider, especially if someone is, uh, has a spousal benefit on your benefit. Yes, yes. It would, when you suspend your benefits, you're suspending all benefits on your records. That would include any auxiliary like spousal, like you said, or dependent benefits. And there's another thing that I think is really important to note when it comes to delayed retirement credits is when they're actually granted. So with the Social Security Administration, you can delay any amount of time past your FRA, any month increment, you're going to get that two thirds of 1%, 8% every year. But when that's added to your benefit is actually the January of the following year that it's earned. Until you turn 70, there's that caveat. When you turn 70, you then are entitled to all of your delayed retirement credits at once. So that, I think, is the best time if you are able or in a position financially, health-wise, that you can delay and maximize on those delayed retirement credits. Waiting till 70 is the most beneficial. Yeah. So how important is it that someone work with a, an advisor who has access to, say, Social Security software programs? I always recommend working with an advisor that uses any type of Social Security optimization tool. I find that every case is different. Looking at your unique scenario, it's case by case basis. It's not a one size fits all. Your neighbor may be able to delay until they're 70 and you can only delay until you're 68 and a half. Everybody's case is different and it's really important to use maximization software so that you can ensure that you're getting the most out of your social security. Well, Allison, we covered a lot of ground. Anything we missed or anything that bears reemphasizing? I don't think so. I think that we covered everything. Um, I just really enjoy delayed retirement credits and I find that it's the most beneficial strategy to really look at and analyze when you're looking for the right strategy for you. Well, Allison, as always, I want to thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.